Thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Allen at Leon Springs Baptist. We love God. In fact, we love God supremely, and we love people, and we're busy making disciples. Those are the words of Jesus Christ and the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. We're praying that God's going to use us to bless you, to encourage you, and to challenge you in your walk of faith. Thank you for joining us, and we hope if you have the opportunity, you'll come and visit us Sunday morning at 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. At 10.30 a.m., we also have a Facebook Live and a YouTube option. Again, we love God supremely, and we love people. Thank you for being here, and we pray that God uses us to encourage you in your journey of faith. So today I have a one-word sermon, one word that I want you guys to remember, and when you go out to lunch or later today, you're like, so well, how was service? One word I want you to remember, and that word is edify. Would y'all say it with me if you're members, please? Edify. What's that one word? Edify. edify means to build up, and I'll be asking that throughout the rest of this sermon. Now, in the first service, when I said one word, somebody said amen. I'm like, What? <laughs> Hey, I got a lot more words. In fact, I have two long lists, but I'm going to keep saying, what's the sermon about? And it'll be that one word, edify, right? Because, you know, in some ways, today is going to be like getting a drink of water from a fire hydrant. Whoa, that's enough, Lord. Okay, okay, okay. Because I got a lot to cover. But at the end of the day, we're going to be focused on that word that we edify, okay? So, um, if you would, join me as we say this prayer. I'm going to be doing this for the next several weeks. I just think it's good. Jesus taught us how to pray. Let's do it together. Let's begin at our Father. You ready? Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil how Jesus taught us to pray. That ought to be a pattern for us. You know what stands out to me today in that? It's the yellow part right at the top. When we pray, when we begin our day, it ought to be to hallow your great name. In fact, almost all of my prayers begin with the name of God. It was just something someone taught a long time ago. I begin with, oh, Abba, Father, uh, or, oh, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Or I begin with uh, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Shalom, my, my peace. Because there's something about hallowing God's name. The moment, if, if that's the first thing out of your mouth when you pray, you're instantly focused on God. Isn't that the way we want to be as a church, right? Okay, and then what's the next thing? Once you're vertically focused on God, what's the next thing? Seek first the kingdom. He's the king. If we're focused on the king, the next thing is, what about his kingdom? How are you using me to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness? Does that make sense? One of the reasons I love this church, and I mean love it because I've never been in a church like that. I hear Tim say the same thing. Tim's been privileged to be at a lot of mega churches and BSF and startups and all the rest, and we both agree there's just something really unique and beautiful going on at this church right now. One thing we love about it is this church is grounded in the word. And so today is a sermon where I'm going to talk about, yes, but how, yes, but how do we praise and worship God? Because praise and worship can be very personal. And, you know, we had some things that happened uh, last week and over the last few months that have some of our people talking. Listen, when I say talking, I mean in a good way. I love it that people come and talk to me about what's on their mind. I don't mean in, oh, there's disunity, they're talking. I literally mean, thank you that people are talking, right? And I'm hearing things like this. Um, I love our church, but I've never seen some of the things that I've seen. I've never experienced some of what I'm experiencing. I'm not sure how I feel about that. And just so you know, it's across the whole spectrum. It's, um, um, 
man, this has just touched me. My life has changed. That was wonderful. I, like, like that, right? And then I got some others that are like, you know, I'm not sure. That felt a little distracting to me. It kind of took me off, off my coat. So today, what we're going to do, what was that one word? Edify. Edify. We're going to have a sermon that talks about how are we supposed to praise and worship and how do we edify one another, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm pulling out a document that I put together many years ago. It's um, how do we praise and worship. I mean, let me get it right. Principles, 10 principles of how we praise and worship that unite Leon Springs Baptist. So you want to know what we mean by praise and worship? This is what we mean. And in fact, I, um, I'm going to have this document out at the information desk. We used to keep it out in the lobby years ago. I went and looked at this. I did this series 14 years ago. I was like, have I been here that long? Yes, I have. Okay. This is good stuff. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to be walking through this. You don't have to write every one of these down. I mean, you can if you want to, but they're all out on the, the lobby there, right? I want to start with principles of praise and worship that unite us. This is what we mean by praise and worship here at Leon Springs Baptist, right? Because we've had some great expressions of praise and worship. Well, how do they fit? Well, let's look at what the Bible says. You want to join me in that journey? Are we ready? God, please help me to preach your word, to articulate what you want for this, your church at Leon Springs Baptist. In Jesus' name, amen. So right at the top is the definition. And I use a definition from a guy named Wayne Grudem, who's a theologian I respect a lot. He says this, and I think you'll agree with it, but listen to it. The term worship sometimes is applied to all of the Christian's life. And it is rightly said that everything in our life should be an act of worship. Do you agree with that? Everything we do, not just right here, right? However, this is the definition, however, worship can be used in a more specific sense, a more narrow sense, to refer to music, words, and heart attitude, especially when we assemble together. Worship is everything, and what do we call this? We call it a worship service. They're both true. Does that make sense? Okay. So as I lay out these 10 principles, the first three are worship as all of life, and then the last seven are about what we mean by worship here at Leon Springs Baptist. Let's dig in. By the way, what was that word that y'all were supposed to remember? Everybody got it? Okay. Edify. Edify. One guy in the first service said, I thought you were saying simplify, and it was only for the Marines. No, don't do that to me. Edify, to build up. Worship all of life. Our first principle is to glorify God. We are made, desired, aimed to glorify God in everything. Worship can be every part of life. All activities can be worship if done for the glory and pleasure of God. Martin Luther said it this way. A dairy maid can milk cows, can milk cows to the glory of God. Everything, it can be done for the glory of God. How you serve, you know, just everything in life. Do you all agree with that? Simple, but guiding and first principle. First principle. You and I were made to glorify God, right? Second, worship means substance over style. Substance over style. Listen to this. Worship is the inner exalting of God that results in the outward expression of authentic worship. That's one of our guiding principles. You got to get it right in your heart before you express it outside, okay? Substance over style. A third one is worship, we believe, worship is knowing God, or I think I put on here private worship. You need to get your private worship right before you do your public worship. And that doesn't mean you have to get it perfect. It just means you ought to be doing some worship before you show up on Sunday morning. Hey, are any of you like me? that I can remember bringing the kids here and it was always a challenge. Get the three kids ready, get together. We seem to have more fights per capita on Sunday morning than any other time during the week. Maybe that was just me, okay? But part of that was because I tended to take the weekends off. 
did my quiet time, did my quiet time. Saturday's a catch-up day. Sunday, they're going to feed me. So I didn't do worship the two days before I came. That was actually on me. We need to have our private worship and then bring that into the public setting, okay? Any argument on any of those? Three principles. Now we're going to go to worship when assembling together. Each principle that I say has a kind of a phrase that you're going to see on the screen behind me, and then it has kind of a one-sentence explanation with a bunch of Bible scriptures, so you'll get to see all these. Just making sure, because it's a little warm. Ready? What's our one word? Edify. Edify. What, when I ask you, what was this sermon about? You don't go, well, I don't know. There's a whole lot. Now you say, it was about Edify. How do I edify? And you'll see that in a minute. We'll get there. So when we assemble together, the first principle of Leon Springs Baptist is that we are God-pleasing. Not me-pleasing, not doing it for others, God-pleasing. And therefore, in our worship services, meaning what we're doing right here, our big services, our congregation, our first focus is vertical. And that's why many of the songs we sing, we're singing directly to God. God, I love you with all my heart. God, right? Because we believe that God is in our midst and he inhabits the praises of our people, right? But God-pleasing also means vertical to him, but sometimes we horizontally, we sing to one another. You see that in the Bible all the time. Come on, you saints, let's worship him together. Come on, you saints, let's worship him. I mean, you just see that in the Psalms over and over and over and over again. So there's a vertical focus, but in our service, we also have horizontal. And then lastly, there's an inward focus. Where do you see that in the Bible? Places like Psalm 100. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Who's he talking to? Talking to my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let all that is within me bless your holy name. Thus, our worship services have all of those. Vertical, we're just singing to God and we're excited. Come on, we're horizontally saying, let's do it together. And sometimes, bless the Lord, O my soul. Do you see that? Principle number one. This is how we do praise and worship at Leon Springs Baptist. Secondly, God's manifest presence. We pursue God's promise, God's prom- listen to God's promise, to draw near to us. James chapter four, verse eight. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you, right? A.W. Tozer put it this way. The universal presence, meaning God is everywhere, and the manifestation of his presence are different. And what he meant by that, he articulated in his book, Pursuit of God, is that there's this Christian paradox, a conundrum. In the one sense, we've already found God. I was lost, now I'm found, right? I was dead, now I have the Holy Spirit, and I got all the Holy Spirit. We have found God, but we still pursue God. We still train ourselves for godliness. We ask, we seek, we go after him. See, We believe at Leon Springs Baptist that when you are saved, when you receive Jesus as your Savior, you get all of the Holy Spirit at that moment. You don't have to go chasing more somehow through an experience. And as clear as I can say this, we are not chasing experiences at Leon Springs Baptist, okay? We are chasing God. Now, we have both found him, we've received him, and yet we still seek him and we go hard after him, and that's very biblical, The next principle, heart and head. We worship in spirit and in truth, as Jesus said. We worship with our emotions and with our mind. See if you remember this verse. Jesus said the greatest, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your mind. Do you see it? And all of your strength. So at Leon Springs Baptist, We do that. Now, I remember somebody who, um, this is me not saying their name, like catch that word, okay, Um, who said, you know, what I don't like about church, because boy, is it in fashion to bash church and organized religion, right? 
you know what I don't like about this? It's so emotionally manipulative. And they're like, you know the song is going to start here, and then it's going to build here, and then it's going to do this, and they're just emotionally manipulating, and I just, I want no part of that. Well, that sounded kind of good on the surface, but it kind of made me want to puke after I thought about it. That may sound strong, but it did, okay? Because I have very strong, very strong thoughts and feelings about the local church based on the Scripture, And for someone to take what is a beautiful, I'm just expressing my affections to God and say, that's emotional. Wait a minute. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul. So I like something that John Piper wrote. In fact, to this person, I listened. I I stuffed it. I didn't say the mean thing. I thought about it. And then I came back and said, hey, can I share this with you? So so, sorry, that was probably more than y'all needed. That was my inside voice. So I'm sitting down with him. I said, I want you to know, we intentionally aim to stir up emotions. And I let it hang just like that. And I could see, well, I was expecting you to to defend yourself. No, no, we, we definitely aim to stir up heartfelt emotions. And then I read this quote that I like from John, John Piper. Listen to this. Emotional, but not manipulative. Our corporate expression of worship right here, right, should aim to spark and express deep, strong, real emotion towards God. Not manipulating, but appealing to clear thinking and spiritual truths. Meditating on truth should spark a passion in our heart where we just want to express it. Does that make sense? That's why I so love having Tim here. Every one of our songs is grounded and rich in theology. Even if sometimes the world doesn't use it. I raise my Ebenezer. Oh, we're covered in the blood. Rushing wind. It's like, what are you talking about? Those are all biblical words. Because we teach, we teach, we teach even through our singing, even through the songs we choose. Okay? So one of our principles is a heart and head. Another one. Seventh principle. By the way, just to make sure you all are with me, what's that one word you're going to describe the sermon with? What is it? Hey, what did Dan preach about? He said we got to edify, but he didn't get to it until late in the sermon. Seventh, orderly and not quenching the spirit. That's what we do here. We are orderly because the Bible says God is a God of order and services are commanded to be that way. And we are not going to quench the spirit, which is why the back half of my sermon is, well, what does it mean to praise and worship, right? We edify, we teach biblical ways, both freedom and order, and God can interrupt our services. He can interrupt our services. Tim and I, um, and you know, we, we plan every service. We know what songs are coming. We know what announcements are coming. We have a structure that we believe was bathed in the Holy Spirit, And structure submits to spirit. God can interrupt our services. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to do it every time, but we leave that freedom for him to come in and interrupt the way we do things, right? Sorry, let me look at this. Yeah, I'll come back to this a little later. Number eight, undistracting excellence. We will not distract people through sloppy efforts or excessive flair. What does that mean? Whew. Mike, you remember, we used to be over in the, the gym, and just about every Sunday, you'd just be worshiping, and all of a sudden, you'd get feedback, and it was hard, right? Or, or one speaker would go out, and you're kind of hearing kind of, that was distracting. It didn't stop us from worshiping, right? We kept going, but we had faulty equipment, and we couldn't replace it, and we were doing the best we could. But now, we want to worship in a way where there, don't, there aren't those distractions, Another kind of distraction is excessive flair. If the musicians got up here and all of a sudden they're like, let me play a guitar solo and they're just ripping it and everybody's watching them, well, they're no longer focused on hallowing God's name. See, we want undistracting excellence, which leads me to the next one, our style, okay? Our style. What do we mean by our style? You're going to recognize some of them, but if you're newer, you might be go, you may not have heard this. Okay, 
It's like water from a fire hydrant, right? I'm, I'm talking fast. When you go out to lunch and you'll talk about the sermon and somebody says, hey, what was that sermon about? What are you going to say? You're getting weak. What is it? Edify. Edify, which means to build up. And that's coming in just a moment, okay? So, our style. Leon Springs does have a style. Leon Springs Baptist. Substance over style, but we do have a style. First of all, we aim. We are intentional at aiming for high participation. That's the first thing you should know. We aim for high participation. You can go to a lot of churches in this city, and, and they're inviting you just to sit, watch it. They don't want you to be uncomfortable. They want you to kind of check it out. I get that. I used to be a part of a seeker-friendly church that did that. That's not us. It's not us. That's why Tim often is like, come on, guys, sing out. Uh, that's why, you know, we have people here that are just singing with all their heart. We have been encouraging participation, right? Now, participation doesn't always mean, you know, being demonstrative. It could mean you just sit down and you just kind of, kind of let it wash over you. I'll let you guys know, well, I'm getting ahead of myself again. High congregational participation. Our style has historic and contemporary songs, meaning mostly contemporary, but we do historic songs as well. You'll hear Be Thou My Vision, uh, a lot of songs like that. Our songs are saturated with biblical truth and solid theology, and significantly, at Leon Springs Baptist, we provide opportunity for beauty and the arts. Beauty and the arts. Now, <laughs> um, any beauty in the arts didn't come from Dan Allen. I'll put it that way. All right. Um, in the 35, 34 years I've been married, I've never got a compliment on the clothes that I picked out because Amy always picks them out. I have no taste when it comes to clothes, art, beauty, things like that. But Pastor Tim and some of the people here do. And that's why, you know, they care about the lighting. They care about the flow of the service. They care about a lot of those details that I often overlook. And, and just to kind of bring this back biblical, if you read in the Old Testament and you read about the tabernacle, you're going to find out God cares a lot about beauty and details. There is just all of this writing about scarlet thread and, uh, you know, the beauty of, of the tabernacle and skilled workers and incense that goes up that's a soothing aroma to the Lord. I don't get all that, but it's in the Bible. Okay, y'all with me? What's that one word? There's a reason I'm going there, and we're about to see it. Look at the scripture. Variety and expression. Now, I'm going to read it, and then I want to share something. It says, all things are lawful for me, meaning in Christ, I can do what I want. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things build up or edify. So, in the last weeks, we've had some things that just made people go, what's that about, right? We had a... You know, we had a person that danced across the front. We had somebody that came up to the stage and had a word. Uh, we had other, you know, we've had uh, people shouting out, uh, sometimes shouting out so much it distracts other people, right? We have people clapping really loud. I'm, I don't see any nodding heads. Are y'all awake, right? <laughs> that is true. We, that did happen here, right? And as I heard different people come to me, I thought, you know, it's a perfect time to look at what the Bible says about a variety of expressions and return to our principles. Let me read it to you. Variety and expression. This is how we do worship when we gather together. We will be careful to support others' rightful expressions of praising God. We will be careful to support others' rightful expressions of praising God, even if it doesn't suit our preferences. And the Bible reveals many, many ways to do that. And that's what I'm going to do with the rest of my message. Is it really? Oh, man, I can't believe it's that late. I apologize. Can y'all hang in there a little extra time? I usually, you know, I rarely ask you for that. Edify, thank you. So, uh, 
boy, man, I, I have been praying and preparing for this all week. And I want to make sure that I'm calling us to who we are as Leon Springs Baptist. There's some people over here that are like, Pastor, Pastor, don't quench the spirit. I get to do whatever I want, and you shouldn't quench, you know, don't, no limitations. And then I got a few over here that are like, you know, what they did was distracting and disorderly. I can't handle, I can't do anything about these streams. What I can do is say, we as a church are going to do what God called us to do. We are going to be orderly and not quenching. We are going to worship with head and heart, and we are going to support one another in biblical expressions of worship. I'm about to show you no less than nine different Hebrew words for how to praise God. Take me about 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 15. What you're going to see is the first several, everybody agrees with. Then we get to the middle ones. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. And down at the bottom, hmm, that makes me a little uncomfortable at times. But every one of these is biblical. Let's start with them, okay? That's on the back side of your notes. The first one is, the Bible says that a legitimate way to praise and worship is sing. And boy, do we sing, right? The Bible says, I give thanks to the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praises to his name. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. In Hebrews chapter 2, it says this, I will declare your names to my brothers. Listen, in the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. Now, we can debate how much singing, right? I mean, you know, we do, we've done four songs already and we got another one. I remember for most of my Christian life before I became a pastor, I was that guy, I'm confessing, I was that guy that would show up late in service because I wanted to be there in time for the preaching. So I'd come in 15 minutes late because they sang too much. Is that terrible to say? Now, I'm the guy that wants to be there from the beginning because I can't wait to praise God. Why would I judge either one of those? We're all at a different place in that. Here at Leon Springs Baptist, we start with a call to worship, and then we have three or four songs. It lasts about a half hour. For some of you, that's too much. For some of you, it's not enough. That's how we do it because we want to cultivate and build that worship muscle, okay? So one way to praise God is to sing. Another is to play instruments. God ordained musical instruments, the trumpet blast, strings, timbrel, all of these different instruments. And um, yeah, I'll save the rest for that. I think that's self-explanatory. Here's one. Why at Leon Springs Baptist do we stand when we worship? Well, the Bible says in Psalm 135, it talks about praising and worshiping the Lord. In fact, let me just read it to you. Psalm 135, verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O servants of the Most High. You who stand in the house of the Lord. Did you hear it? You who stand in the house of the Lord. So why do we stand? The Bible doesn't see fit to explain all of this to us. It just tells us what to do. Stand. Why would you stand? It's often a sign of respect. You know, if a, if a woman comes into a room or someone important comes into the room, we stand up as a sign of respect. Another reason we stand is it, it helps us to focus. It's pretty easy just to kind of sit and let your mind wander, but when you stand up, it helps you to focus. So do we have any disagreement with those? No? No? You all with me? Okay, here we go. I know it's been a lot. I know I'm a little long. When you go to lunch and you ask, hey, what was that sermon about? Edify, you still awake. Good, okay. It's not, man, Dan had a lot. Okay. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify or build up. So everyone agrees with those first three. The fourth one is lifting hands. The Bible says, so I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift hands to your name. I remember being in Castle Hills First Baptist, 1989. Big church, 1,500 people or so. And right up in the front, two or three people started lifting their hands in the middle of the song service. I was one of them that thought, what's that about? Because I thought that's what the Pentecostals and other people did, but we're a Baptist church. Am I the only one that thought something like that? 
So back in, in the 80s, in the early 90s, that this was actually really controversial, believe it or not, right? What I love is, again, what does the Bible say? I will lift your hands in the sanctuary and I will bless the Lord. Listen to this one. Psalm 141. May you accept my prayer like incense. May you accept my uplifted hands like the evening offering. That was the one that got me. I had people say, well, you know, I lift hands as a sign that I'm receiving something. Um, I could even picture like in sports when my team scores in the last two minutes. Yes. Oh, there's my hand lifted. Oh, I get it. God deserves that. I kind of got that. I got it as a, it's a sign of surrender. I got all that. But the one that really moved me, my story was this one. May you accept my prayers like incense, like, like incense rising up to the Lord and offering. May my uplifted hand be like the evening offering. So when I praise, I'm usually saying, you are good, God. You are worthy of everything. Here's my offering to you. God, I love you. Now, I had to get past, we don't do that. Oh, I don't do that. Oh, Amy can do that too. Now, if I do it, somebody's going to think I'm doing it just because everybody else is. It's crazy what our thoughts are, right? We worship out of the inward exalting of God, and then it becomes an outward expression. Lifting of hands to the Lord. Lifting your hands can be a symbol. I already said that. So let's go to the clapping of hands. Psalm 147.1 says this, Oh, clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God the voice of triumph. Part of the reason we're having this sermon is so we can all be on the same page, right? And so I'm trying to be very real about some things that work and some things that don't. When I'm worshiping, sometimes it gets a little long. I love worshiping, but sometimes I sit down. And I want to encourage you guys, if y'all in the back have never come up here, just sit down, bow your head. People are singing. It's almost like the worship is just going all around you. And sometimes I start to pray quietly. And I'm like agreeing with the words, yes, God, or he's doing something in my heart, right? And Tim will lead us to one of those tender moments, you know, kind of quiet or it starts to get soft. Well, if at that moment where I'm bowed and I'm there, somebody behind me goes, yes, Lord, it would just jolt me, right? There's no nodding heads. I'm really getting nervous here. Okay, right? 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 If somebody shouts out at that moment, it's like, I was right there and, and, and I don't want to say anything because I don't want to be rude, but that did kind of jolt me. What I'm saying is that what's our one word? How we worship should edify and build up one another. We're not going to come and quench and say you can't do it, but be wise in how you do it. Does that make sense? I mean, it's obvious. Tim leads us so well. We know. We know. We can just feel it like, yeah, yeah, yes, Lord. But at those quiet moments, recognize reverence and quiet are also a part of worship. Make sense? Okay. So clap your hands. And that leads to the next one, number six. Clap your hands and shout to God with a voice of joy. The Hebrew word there is ruah. It literally means to be so excited you just can't contain it. And you're like, yes, God, you are so, so good. I haven't been in a church that expresses that heartfelt joy in my life like I have here. And I love that. I love it when I just, I mean, you can just hear certain people. They're like, yes, Lord, we love you. In the first service, we get Raphael in the back. He's like, it's beautiful. Come on, church. Come on, church. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, there's a place for that. Does that make sense? But be wise in how you do that, which leads to the last three. Psalm 95, verse 6 says, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before God, before the Lord our maker. There are appropriate times to kneel. And you may think, well, of course. We're talking about in the Sunday service. Sometimes people come up here to the front, to the altar. Are they showing off because they walk up front? 
Come on now, are they showing off? No, no. In fact, a lot of them have to go, oh, what are people gonna say about me if we go? But they go because they're worshiping God and they wanna come bow down and that's a, a sign of praise and worship at that moment, right? But if somebody came right here and just laid out on the floor right here, maybe that is a legitimate expression. I mean, it's in the Bible. But if they laid out on the floor right here, What's going to happen to everybody right here? Because that doesn't normally happen. They're going to notice. It's going to be distracting, right? Are, are you with me? Okay. Now, so how do we handle things like that or like the next one? The Bible says dancing is appropriate. Let me read it to you. And how do we handle those things? Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Yep, yep. Sing praise in the congregation, you godly ones. Let Israel be glad. Yep. Be glad. Let the sons of Zion rejoice. Let them praise his name with dancing. Let them sing praises with the timbrel and the lyre. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. So what are we to do with stuff like that? Because one of the things that happened last week, if you were here, we had a lady who just danced right across, the, went right back, right? Some people thought it was beautiful. Uh, we had one person that said, Finally, someone's doing what we actually sang. Our song, Death Was Arrested, My Feet Rose With Dancing. We literally sing it. And then it happened. But because of the way it happened, several other people suddenly were no longer focused here. They were like, what just happened? Here's the deal. I don't know how else to say this, so I'm going to try and be as direct as I can. Dancing is a legitimate expression of praise and worship. So is kneeling, clapping hands, lifting. But what's our word? Edify. I will edify, I will build up the body. If you've chosen to be a part of this body, we have a small building. We do. So if you come dancing in the front or you fall over or you do whatever, that's going to be somewhat distracting. If we were a stadium with 20,000 people and you'd barely notice, well, then it wouldn't be. Here's the test that I often use with people like that. And by the way, that person did nothing wrong. That was a guest. That's how they normally worship in their church. She sensed the freedom of the Spirit, so she just did what she would normally do, right? And, and I've said this to, you know, the friends who brought them. Um, if, if they were to come again, I would just explain some of what I'm telling you right here. And what I would say is, if you feel like you need to dance before the Lord, you know, you can go in the back and dance right there and God will see it and it won't distract other people. That's a reasonable thing to do because at this, at this church, we want to provide legitimate expressions of praise and worship, but we want to do it in a way that edifies one another, okay? We're not quenching the spirit and we're not going to distract people. Does that make sense? You all with me? Okay. Which leads to the last one. Leads to the last one and then one more song. The last one is the Hebrew word Hallel. Hallel. It literally means to rave or to boast or be so excited you just can't even contain yourself. And I'd like to see a little bit more of this at times. This is uh, like when David was bringing the ark in and he's just dancing and going all crazy and his wife is like, oh, you made a spectacle of yourself, right? And what was David's answer? You think that was something? Wait till you see that. You know, it was basically, right? Oh, I may be a little concerned about, um, you know, keeping things from being distracting, but we can shepherd that. What we can't do is make a dead a frozen, chosen, dead audience come to life. I want people who are excited about God. I want you to be excited about God. This word hallel, it literally means to boast or to rave or to just like, like be so overly enthusiastic that it's like, whoa, right? Hallel means to praise the Lord. I'm about to read Psalm 150 to you with hallel, all right? Tim and I have a praise and worship song we like right now, and it's, it's talking about the goodness of God, and it says, God can heal that, and God can do this, and God can do that, and the line is, don't you tell me he can't do it, don't you tell me he can't do it, and I just love that attitude. Our God can do anything. He is worthy of praise and worship. Listen to Psalm 150 with Hallel. Now, again, there are times to be reverent, there are times to be quiet, 
There's times to be thoughtful. I wouldn't do this in the middle of communion, right? But listen to this, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Exclamation point, by the way, because it's Hallel. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty expanse. Praise him with those mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Oh, would you praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and even with dancing. Praise him with those stringed instruments in the pipe. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallel, praise the Lord. Amen? Is that, an, is that an appropriate expression of praise and worship? Some of you are like, whoa, Dan, just, whoa, turn it down a little bit. No, I will not. Don't you tell me my God can. My God can do anything. I'm so excited. This is me dancing, being excited, as I tell you. <laughs> you ask Amy, that's true. That's, that's, that's about all it gets. So I'm like, yes, God, yes, God. That was me, super excited. Now, some of you are much more expressive. What was our principle? Variety and expression. We will support others' rightful, biblical expressions of worship. We will not quench them. And what's the one word that describes our sermon? Edify. Edify. We will do things that are both orderly and do not quench the spirit. We have one more song. One of our young people is going to be leading us in a song about fresh wind, about our desire to see God pour his spirit out. Let's pray. The Bible says that God is working all around us and God is working in you. So I want to urge you to respond to God's truth. And if you're looking for a church home at Leon Springs Baptist, we are a healing place in this hurting world. We're equipping people to serve God. So I want to invite you to join us at 9 a.m. or 1030 a.m. on Sundays, or you can catch us on Facebook Live or YouTube Live at 1030 a.m. And I want to end by saying, God loves you and you can trust in the goodness of God. Thank you for joining us.